A lot of us are familiar with the Indian musical instrument called the sitar. Yes, I may be a piano player, but to lay these fingers on a sitar is a whole new ball game. Talking of sitar, today we will have the pleasure of meeting this area's well-recognized Indian classical sitar maestro, Miss Alif Laila. She will appear as a guest of honor in Mr. Manoj Singh's feature called Chit Chat with Manoj. Let's meet her. Welcome to Chit Chat with Manoj. I'm Manoj Singh. Hello, Adab, Namaste. Today I'm going to interview Alif Laila. She's from our area and a world-renowned sitarist. Welcome, Alif. I really appreciate you t uh, taking the time to come on my show. Thank you for inviting. Um, Alif was born in Dhaka, Bangladesh, uh, where she began the formal study of sitar under Ustad Mir Qasim Khan, nephew of the legendary maestro Ustad Alauddin Khan. She also is an accomplished painter. Lela has a BA degree from, of college, from the College of Arts, Fine Arts in Dhaka. She has toured worldwide and performed at numerous prestigious venues such as the Kennedy Center, the, the Bangladesh National Museum and many more. The, the, she also recorded and performed with worldwide renowned tabla artists like Pandit Anindo Chatterjee and Ustad Tari Khan. In February 2015, she founded uh, the Sitar Niketan, her music school. So welcome. And how is the music scene in Bangladesh? It is as uh, beautiful as the scenery of Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, it is actually quite vibrant. And um, as you know, the, there are great um, poets, composers, and uh, musicians who were born there. In fact, Mandit Ravi Shankar, Ustad Alekbar Khasab, Ustad Vilayat Khasab are all uh, rooted in Bangladesh mm. and also Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore and Kazi Nazrul Islam, the great poet, they have inspiration from Bangladesh. So it's a very rich um, uh, tapestry of musical heritage. That's very nice. I mean, uh, Bengalis or Bangladesh uh, or in general, uh, 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 it's sort of in, in their blood to do uh, learn and 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 uh, you know some of the famous musicians are yes. like are, are like that. Yes. So Robindra Sangeet yes. and all that. So um, when did you realize the passion for music and was it in your family? Actually, it goes beyond family. As I said, a Bengali is just music is in the blood yeah. and it's just a natural thing, I think, and especially for girls, for some mm -hmm. reason, every girl is expected to learn how to sing and dance. So it was a, a kind of, kind of uh, already very much bonded in me. And from childhood, you know, I was uh, getting trained in one of the very prestigious uh, l learning institutions of music, mm. which is called Bulbul Academy of Fine Arts. Mm. So I started at seven and it was singing. And then in, in school, I was dancing. So it was a very well-rounded uh, background, a rich background of arts and That's very nice, <laughs> very nice. So when did you start the mastering in sitar? I would say uh, mastering came very late in life. Mm -hmm. It was just an introduction which my mother actually introduced me to the sitar. She wanted to learn and she was not able to. So she thought, uh, she asked me, would you like to give it a try? I said, yes. And it was just a very wonderful experience because I learned very fast and uh, my ustadji was happy, so encouraging me. And so that's how slowly and the, the, but the thing is that I found out that the more I was learning, the more I have to learn. So I think that was a very positive challenge and it kind of sowed the seeds of what later on turned into a passion because you, you can't give up. And I was one of those children who wanted to do the best mm -hmm. and always wanted to perfect things and the, the challenge and the encouragement from my family, from my teacher, so it grew. And then later on in life, because as you know, music is with emotion and with sadness, happiness. So when you grow, you become more passionate about it. Mm, interesting. What yeah. is, in very short, uh, what's the history of, of sitar? Uh, I mean, is it an instrument which started in our area in India and, and how, what's the background behind yeah, it? Yeah, the origin uh, comes from Iran. 
-hmm. It's a three-string setar, and it was created by Amir Khasro. He was a very, very super talented uh, man, a poet, composer, architect, uh, writer, I mean, name it, he has all these qualities. He actually created the sitar. You know, he uh, was in the court of Alauddin Khilji in the 14th century. Wow, so I, yeah. learned, I learned something new today. I thought it was always uh, from India or some yeah, in our area. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, it was born in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. India gave birth to sitar. Okay, Let's put okay. it this way. No, but you mentioned Iran and then it, uh, also... It came from the A lot region. of Afga people from Afghanistan play very good sitar. Yes, uh, and and yes, of, course, of course, it's traveled all it's over traveled, in that yeah. area. Yep. Yeah. So, tell us now again a basic question, a bit about the dragas, you know, uh, I am not big, I mean, I don't understand music that well, I, I, I do listen, it sounds good, um, different types of ragas and uh, which one is your favorite, I know there is a morning raga, then there is a rain, when it is raining, yes. there is a raining raga, then evening raga. You might say rags, rags I was going to say mm. rag because that's more Indian, sounding Indian. So it's like life and rag, you can't separate. So rags are based on melodic phrases interplay, which characterizes one rag. And it has a set of ascending and descending scale, mm -hmm. which uh, kind of is fixed. But the character is just like you and me, a personality almost like, or a painting you can imagine. So one rag will kind of emit an energy. So basically these are the uh, grammatical things. Are, there are 10 mother parent rags, which mm. are called thoughts. Mm. And those have the basic dominant and the semi-dominant notes are the phrases which kind of uh, denote what what uh, scale it is and from there there are hundreds of rags that are born mm. yes yeah, so wow. it's a very intricate I know and it, complex. it is an interview by itself <laughs> yes of course <laughs> so what has been your most memorable performance and why my most memorable performance is a very unconventional unexpected Expected experience. It was in the Shaheed Minar in Dhaka. Mm. It was it was a commemoration of the language movement um, heroes, and uh, no one ever has played over there, and let alone a female sitar player. So. Uh, some of our cultural organization approached me and said, let's give it a try. And mm. we had a backup plan that if people, it's all like general people who has mm. no idea what a sitar is, never has seen anything like that, or, or knows anything about classical mm. music, mm. let alone. So we were, we had a backup plan. If we have stones or tomatoes or any <laughs> <laughs> thrown at us, mm. we will flee. Mm. But believe it or not, Manoj, this is what makes me so ecstatic that the energy of the classical music was proven that day. There was just people who were glued and they were saying, keep playing, keep playing, Silence, keep playing. Yeah. It was just like a roar of, it was amazing and that is actually a very memorable experience well, for me, yeah, I, I, unexpected. I, I can understand. So tell us about what goes through your mind before a performance, like I'm an actor and you know, before going on the stage, um, you are a little bit nervous and as good actors tell me that actually is good for you because um, you don't lose the focus and uh, you know, you're always nervous that I might forget a dialogue or what will happen, but you know, you go there and you do your gig and so what is going through your mind? Yes, like you said, it's a mixture of all things and that's why you do that. That's why your live performance in any form of art. I think the artists go through the similar sort of a back and forth in their minds and confidence is great. But honestly, it's, uh, I'll, I can give you a funny analogy that I feel like, okay, so here I'm ready for a bungee drum, jumping or here I'm skydiving. Mm. It's, it's an elation, a feeling of elation with confidence. And unpredictability is what I want, I invite, because our music is improvisational. It's structured, we know the science of it, the grammar of it, but like you, in, in acting, in, everything is the same. So this is a very wonderful, every time uh, it's a new 
a right. range of thoughts and whatever. And you enjoy the life. And I just feedback. enjoy that and the challenge because I'm not, nothing stands alone. Before going that, the other elements of the sound technician, the lighting, the uh, the audience, everything is uh, actually matters for a good performance. Correct. So, like I said earlier, also like I don't know much about classical music, but I do go to concerts. I've come to your concerts as well, and. Uh, you know, even uh, your, I heard your performance at the Salisbury University and it, uh, you know, you just, you're glued to it. You want to listen. First of all, it was fast paced and, uh, and same with any other uh, tabla player or something when, and, and you just could get mesmerized. What is it about that? This is about the music mm. and it, uh, as uh, Ustad Baladka said that, you know, there's, you don't have to go anywhere to find something new because uh, Indian classical music evolves, grows. It's an eternal, exciting amazement. So I think that's what you are describing as you really don't have to understand. It's the energy, just like I described the audience, the general audience uh, in Shahid Minar, and no one has to understand because mm. it's, it's the energy. The passion is in the melody, mm. in the rhythm. So basically, uh, it's that what it's all about. Mm, it's mm. So who are your uh, gurus or favorite sitar players who you look up to or, or learn from or listen? Uh, you still go back and you know, you... Of course. Yeah. Yes, my uh, guru uh, who was uh, Ustad Ali, uh, Mir Qasim Khan, Ustad Ali Akbar Khasab's cousin and Ala the great Alauddin Khasab's nephew, and by the way, Ustad Alauddin Khasab is Ravi Shankar's guru. Mm. So this is a very, very rich group of musicians that has influenced me and our, my gharana, the senior Maihar gharana, mm. is one of the newer gharanas mm. in, the, in the Indian classical instrumental realm. So I always look up to them. And of course, there's a string of other uh, instrumentalists and vocalists and every single uh, Indian classical music has something new. So my mind is open, but definitely like in art, in Western art, Michelangelo or Vincent van Gogh, I mean, if you're looking at the ultimate, I follow Ustad Ali Agbar Khasa, Pandit Ravi Shankar, Pandit Nikhil Banerjee. Mm. So all of these uh, great artists yeah, I influence know some, me. I mean, yes. those names for yes. sure. Um, tell us about your music school. The Sitar Niketan. Oh, lovely. I, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always excited. It's called Sitar Niketan. Niketan in Sanskrit is home. It really, I have created a home in the name of Sitar, a home of culture, of uh, broadening one's mind, whether you are from an Asian descent or a Westerner, it doesn't matter who it is. Once you come to Sitar Niketan, you actually are kind of um, nourished with something which is the basis is Indian classical, but ultimately it's universal. So my uh, approach is uh, definitely I teach in a very Eastern traditional mm -hmm. method, but I don't limit my ideas into that this has to be this way. Each person is treated uniquely to their. It's like yoga, you do at your own pace, you enjoy, it's a positive challenge. And each person becomes healed, nourished. Mm -hmm. So through music, uh, this, is, this is a family that I have created and I'm very proud of my students. They also performed uh, for the Gandhi Jayanti uh, last year and it got uh, lots of wonderful remarks and reviews. Thank you so much. And you know, we want this legacy and culture to continue. So anything you want to say uh, to the camera, to the South Asian uh, young generation about uh, our class Indian classical or classical music? Younger generation, I'm telling you, this is an amazing world. Once you step into it, you'll say, why didn't I do this before? The classical music intricacy and the traditions are actually the most uh, structured and, and a way to discipline yourself, but also to liberate yourself. Please come and join and learn Indian classical music. So thank you uh, again, Alif, for coming on my show. Thank you. It's time to wrap up and I'll end with a quote. If music be the food of love, play on. Well said by William Shakespeare. 
Thank you all. All the best. And I, like always say, life is short. Have fun and uh, no regrets. And keep on hearing those good music and playing music.